Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I'm making something pretty awesome. Recently, me and my wife had the luxury of traveling to Alberta, Canada. We got to go to Jasper and Banff and Calgary and a couple of other pretty cool places. And towards the end of our trip, we were in Calgary and my wife had work that she had to do. So I had a day of alone time, I guess you could say. Uh, and luckily I know some, but I know a couple of people in Calgary and I kind of messaged them. I was like, Hey, I'm going to be in Calgary. Is there any way we could meet up? And they were like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. So I had the pleasure of spending the day with Ben Eady, my, my buddy here. Yeah. Um, I tried my best not to like geek out over meeting him and, you know, fanboying and, and too much of that stuff. But I, you know, I try to play it cool. So I met up with him at his house. I got to tour his, his workspace and see the things he's working on. Then we went to Fuse 33. It's a makerspace in Calgary. It's like kid in a candy store type stuff. Uh, I got to tour it and it was super awesome meeting Shannon Hoover, who I've also worked with in the past. While I was there, Tracy met up with me and Ben and we kind of got to piddle around and do a bunch of stuff. And towards the end of it, after we had eaten lunch, we we're like, well, what do we do now? And we're like, well, let's go watch a movie. So when Ben Eady, who works in the movie industry, says, hey, let's go watch a movie. Yeah, I'm going to go watch a movie. So we went and watched Wes Anderson's new movie, Asteroid City. If you're not familiar with Wes Anderson, it's it's some unique stuff. Uh, definitely has his own style and it is very quirky. So as we're sitting down, I'm thinking in my head, here I am sitting with a prop master watching a movie. I know in my head, I've got to build something from this movie to like commemorate the time or whatever, but that's kind of my process. Anytime I watch anything is, oh, I want to make that. Oh, I want to make that. Oh, I want to make that. So as we're watching the movie, this gun comes out. It's a death ray gun. It's kind of like that 1950s retro vibe to it, kind of pieced together with cameras and other random bits. And I'm like, I look over at Ben and he's already made eye contact with me. And he's like, yeah, that's what you need to build. It's like, okay. So as we're putting all this out there, I am going to build a Wes Anderson death ray gun from Asteroid City out of foam and PVC with lots of details. Fingers crossed this works out. Let's get to building. Like the message said a second ago, this will be a very long build. There are a lot of little bits that went into making this one, so please bear with me. I would say it is probably easier to find the parts instead of going through the foam route, but mine will probably be a lot cheaper and definitely weigh a lot less. I start by cutting out all of the pieces I have figured out before I started the build. More will be added later as I see what I have left out. This is definitely not a prop for beginners, each piece is labeled with name, markings to help align, angles to cut, overlay positions, and foam size. I explain all the markings in the cover letter of my template, which are always free and in the description below the video. On the back side of the ray gun is the coil array. I'm just making up the names for most of these things, so just bear with me. I cut the large part out of 24 millimeter foam, and now I'm going to glue on the overlays to each side. This will give the parts more dimension and give a place to fill with wire later in the build. I glue them on with contact cement, trim the parts flush, and then do a little bit of sanding to round over everything. The recesses don't have to be perfect as they're gonna get covered with copper wire later.
The body of the ray gun is made up of what I am told is a Bell and Hal 228mm camera and a viewfinder. I'm going to make this out of EVA foam and make it hollow so that I can pass some PVC pipes through it later. I will build separate boxes, open on one side, and then butt them together. Once the basic structure is built, then I can add all the details on top of it. To help line up your parts, use the U-shaped registration marks along the edges and also also make sure to map out where the overlays will go on each piece. With the camera base built, now I'm going to add the bulkier back end of it. For this, I'm using some 10 millimeter EVA foam to create that nice step up in size that I can see in my reference image. I'll try and add some reference images in the template so that if you do try to build this, you can see what I worked with while designing the template. Just like the previous clip, I have applied contact cement to all my edges and let it set up until it's no longer wet. Then it's just a matter of tacking parts together. I like to lay out my pattern while I do this to not only help people who are trying to build along with me, but also helping to keep me organized. This build has a ton of pieces and some of them look very similar in shape. With the base done, I can now start adding on the mini details on the center part of this gun. It still has some of the greeblies that the original camera has on it, as well as some random things to make it look like it's something else. I'm going to add some ridges that I can see on the screenshot. I wanted them to be dimensional and not just burnt into the grooves. I didn't template these strips out, but I did mark where they would overlay on the main body. And I'm just using 2mm foam and a halved 10 millimeter dowel. Now time for the connectors, dials, latches, lenses, sliders, and other random grooves. First is a DIN plug that was added to the camera. I am going to make it out of a 4mm piece of foam that I will burrow in circles with my rotary tool. I use a sanding drum pulled out a little bit for the main circle and a cutting wheel without the wheel or the screw in it for the small screw holes. Once in, then I burn in the other details with a wood burner. Be careful while burning or sanding foam, wearing a respirator and working in a well-ventilated area is always a good idea as you don't want to breathe this stuff in. The dial is just a couple of layers of foam circles and a 18 millimeter EVA dowel for the knob.
The top has the original camera lens and a dial that are on the actual camera. There is also a slider notched into the corner. There is also a handle and a scope on top of that, but I gotta figure out the placement for some of these things later on in the build. So for now, I'm just gonna focus on the dial and the lens. The dial is another set of circles of foam in various thicknesses, and the lens is just a piece of four millimeter foam that I burned in grooves with the wood burner. On the back side where I'm assuming the film would be loaded in and out of this eight millimeter camera, I'm just going to burn in the grooves of the door. There is also a little rectangle in my template that I'm using for what I'm assuming is the button or lever that allows the door to release and open. The back of the box has this cool little coil that forks out for the supports for the larger coil followed by a cap. I am temporarily gluing them so that I can shape them to get it narrower on one side. Once I have the shape then I am going to break them apart, bevel all the edges, and then glue them back together permanently. Once attached I can burn in a channel to lay down a small strip of 2mm foam. It's hard to tell in the screenshots how it all looks as most of the time it's either covered by a hand or a body. Once the assembly is done, I glue it into the center of the main body and get it as close as I can to the pictures.
I drilled a hole in the front middle and the back middle so that I can run a PVC pipe through the entire thing. I believe I used three fourths of an inch pipe for all three of these or 19 millimeters for my metric friends. This will act as the main support for the front and the back. I just guessed at the length trying to use my reference image as a guide. I cut the long one around 21 inches or 53 centimeters and the two smaller ones at 12 inches or 30 centimeters. Once the long one was in, I sanded an angle onto the shorter ones to secure it into place. I screwed a long screw in halfway, then plugged the pipe to the distance of that screw for the slanted ones and then backfilled it with hot glue. Then I held it in place for quite a while to let the glue cool down. Before I started adding the details, I wanted to cover the PVC in some 2mm foam. I lightly sanded them, then using some super glue to adhere to the foam to the PVC. Once I had the 2mm on, then I added another 8mm layer with some contact cement. I could have used thicker PVC, but that would add to the weight, and I needed it to have a step up to the thickness I needed on the two sides. The angle bits have a recessed area, much like the back coil, in order to place some wire that wraps around it and nestles in. The end of the ray gun looks like an electrical insulator. While not the exact shape, I think I can mimic it at least a little bit with some 15 millimeter half dowels. They are all the same size except for the one closest to the body in the middle. I used a 20 millimeter half dowel for it. A nice trick for gluing up a bunch of small strips is to tape them down side by side so that you can make an easier pass of spreading across all of them instead of doing it one at a time. I marked half inch distance from the top on all my pipes and then use that as my spacing. The prongs on the end of the ray gun are just a couple of circles with an elongated half oval in the middle. To make that protrusion off the end, I just tapered down an 18 millimeter EVA dowel. The ones on the sides are angled in, so I have to cut a slit on the back to allow them to fit in. The middle one doesn't have the half oval and just has a tapered dowel. The circle nubs on the end are just more of the EVA dowel sanded down.
I thought about just finding a handle but got kind of lazy and didn't want to go to the home improvement store to do a search so in just 15 minutes or so I shaped out some foam to do the job. The dark gray foam you see here is what the foam from Cosplay Apprentice. It is a super dense foam that should hold up good enough to actually support the weight of the whole prop. If you can't find this dense foam you may want to include a wire in that handle to help support it a little more or use a different material. I had an issue with my camera and didn't realize that it wasn't recording the back support. It's some half inch CPVC. It's held similar to the front except with the parts being visible in my connection area, I can actually screw the pipes directly to the center pipe. I also back filled it with hot glue too, just for fun. I held my back coil up to the main body assembly and made marks on the pipes to get my length just right. Then I lined it up with the raised area opposite of each other and drew drilled in angled holes to fit the angle of the pipe where they meet. Then it was just a matter of hot gluing in those holes and then holding the whole thing in place. power source for this gun looks like it's a plug-in, though you can't ever actually see what the cord is plugged into. You do see a butchered up piece of cord screwed into the back coil. So I made it out of a chunk of 24mm foam and a 24mm EVA dowel. The plan is just to cut off a broken electrical plug and finish off the look.
two coats of Plasti Dip on this was about one and a half cans worth. For all the base colors, I just used some Platifex acrylic paint. It did take two or three coats for each color because I was painting mostly light colors onto dark. Then I covered the area that would be covered with the wire just so that I wouldn't have to worry about seeing any bare spots. I struggled with the colors as most of Wes Anderson's movies have plenty of drastic color filters on them. So I debated between what I saw on the screen versus the color of the actual parts. I ended up with a compromise somewhere in the middle. Mine may be a little bit brighter and have more color variation than what you see in the movie. All of the areas that are painted copper get some wire wrapped around them. On the insulators on the front, I wrapped some thicker 10 gauge wire. With the coils on the back, I got some thinner 20 gauge. And no, mine is not actual copper wire. I use some anodized aluminum that has a copper shade. The copper version of these same gauge wires would be double or triple the price, so I saved some money here. I poked the starting point through the foam and just started wrapping it around the prop in the designated areas. The ends got a cord super glued into it. I think it was from a broken soldering iron that I may have kept. And the two cords that run into the main body were just a split USB extender. I keep a whole tote full of random broken electronics for this exact purpose. The lens on the camera is just a glass eye that I peeled off the eye sticker and super glued it on top. And finally, the last step, I am in the home stretch and it's only like 10 o'clock the night before the video has to be done. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of editing to do. I'm not going to heavily dirty it up as the screenshots look relatively clean. I just wanted to break up the perfect colors with a little bit of watered down black and brown acrylic paint. Hopefully you enjoyed this build. It was a difficult one to pull off in just five days, but I narrowly squeaked by. The wire and PVC add to the overall weight, but it's not too much with the choices that I did make. In total, this large prop only weighs a pound and 12 ounces. I would imagine that the real thing has has to be at least 10 or 15 pounds if it's made of the real actual objects. And we 
are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. Definitely close to what the screen version looked like. Keep in mind, this shows up for maybe 20 or 30 seconds in the entire film. So there's not a lot of high detailed pictures that you can pull off of it, but there are definitely found parts like a camera uh, that you could probably pick out the actual make and model of transformer coils, a random like power connector for something. Uh, and it's meant to look like it's been pieced together in a garage. So I think the aesthetic has definitely been accomplished. Thank you, Ben, for like finding me all the reference images that you did. It definitely helped. There are some things that I don't know because you don't see it on screen. So like the bottom part, I didn't really know what it looked like. It is what it is, um, but yeah, it was definitely fun getting to meet all the people in Calgary. I also got to meet Stephanie Chan while I was there the next day. We didn't get to meet up the same day that I did with Ben because she had to work, but it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, maybe we'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to build a death ray gun made out of foam and PVC and look like something that's pretty intimidating that could do some devastating damage to somebody. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them, much props. Um, I need to find a way to plug this in. Let me go ahead and, uh, okay. All right, plugged in. Turn this thing on. All right. It is a death ray gun. Prepare yourself. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.